and, and Jin Song. Jin was supposed to present uh, this paper, but he cannot get his visa in time, so I'm presenting on his behalf. So the problem that we started in the paper is influence maximization, which is motivated by viral marketing in social networks. The typical setting for the problem is as follows. We have a social network, and we have K product samples that we wish to give to K individuals. The purpose here is to let those individuals try out the products, and hopefully they will say some good things about the product. And then some of the, their friends might be convinced, and then they relay the message. And then this is propagated in a recursive manner, thus creating a cascade of inference to serve the purpose of viral marketing. So the question here is, if we are to maximize the number of individuals that are influenced by the end of this process, which key individuals should we choose in the, in the beginning to distribute the product samples to? <coughs> to address this problem, existing solutions usually adopt a stochastic model of influence, which sort of captures the conditions uh, under which an individual will be influenced by another. So there are many different models, and the, tip, I mean, the simplest one would just assume that each edge in the social network is associate, associated with a certain probability, and then an individual at the beginning of an edge would have that particular probability to influence the individual at the end, at the end of the edge. So, under the, the adopting uh, model of inference, what the existing solution would typically do is to generate samples based on the models, and then it would use the samples to identify k nodes whose expected influence is likely to be large. Namely, in the expected case, this, those K nodes are supposed to uh, influence a large number of individuals in the viral marketing campaign. More specifically, each sample here would be just a subgraph of a social network generated in a, in a certain way. And the identification of those K nodes is usually, usually done using the greedy algorithm for maximum coverage run over the samples. So there are many solutions based on this paradigm, but uh, there's one issue. They're mostly offline algorithms. That is, they will assume that the user will specify an approximation guarantee to the algorithm, and then the algorithm will just run and run and run, and at the end, the user will get a result. But the process is not, is not interactive. That is, the user will not get any feedback during the, this potentially long wait, and if the user becomes impatient and wants to terminate early, she will not get much use, useful result. So in our paper, we'll look at the, paper, uh, look at the problem from a uh, different perspective. So we want to uh, have algorithms that run in an online manner. So we assume that the user will let the algorithm run, but from time to time, the user may check the progress of the algorithm. And whenever the user checks, the, the algorithm is supposed to return a solution and also report the approximation guarantee of the solution. So if the user is satisfied with the guarantee, then she can just stop and leave. Otherwise, she can let the algorithm continue to refine the solution. So a natural question here would be, why can't we just adopt the existing algorithm for offline, in the offline setting, modify it, and make it run in the online manner? But we found that it's not easy to do because by design, this algorithm would take as input an approximation guarantee, and then they will run according to that approximation guarantee. So if you want to uh, make them uh, able to stop halfway, then basically you need to make them uh, to be able to run even when the approximation guarantee is unknown in advance. And that's just not easy to do. So we redesigned the algorithm for the online setting. And the basic idea is as follows. Our algorithm would keep generating samples using the sa same sampling technique that is adopted in the existing offline algorithms. But uh, whenever the user uh, checks the algorithm for progress, uh, the algorithm will start to look uh, at the sample set that he, he, he has generated. So you divide the sample set into two equal size subsets, R1 and R2. You would use R1 and uh, run the greedy maximum coverage algorithm on it to produce a solution. And then this will, will be the solution reported to the user. But at the same time, you also generate an approximation guarantee. And the approximation, uh, approximation guarantee is uh, computed as follows. We first feed the solution and the second sample, sub, subset of samples, R2, into an estimation algorithm and get a lower bound of this solution's inf expected influence. Meanwhile, we'll fit the first subset of samples along with the solution to another estimation algorithm 
to get an upper bound of the optimal influence, namely the expected influence of the optimal Kano set. So we will then take the ratio of these two bounds as the approximation guarantee of the solution and return, return it to the user. If the user is satisfied, then we just stop here. Otherwise, we'll continue to generate more samples and those more samples will, make, will lead to more accurate uh, solution for inference maximization and better approximation guarantees. So the key issue here is that we need a way to derive this lower bound and upper bound. The details are in the paper, but the basic idea is that we use kernel bounds and to design the algorithms. And in the paper, we also discuss some optimization and extension. In particular, we have a way to optimize the estimation of the, the upper bound. And the basic idea is that we can, if we avoid making some pessimistic assumptions about the performance of our algorithm, uh, we can actually look into the samples that we have and exploit some instance-specific properties, properties to tighten the bounds a bit. And we also show that our algorithm can be extending for the offline setting. And here's a subset of the, a representative subset of the experimental results that we have in the paper. So the x-axis here uh, represents the number of samples that the uh, algorithm will generate. And the y-axis here represents the approximation guarantee that the algorithm can report when given a certain number of samples. The color line here represents the performance of different variants of our, our algorithm whereas the black line here represents the adoption of existing offline algorithms into the online setting. So the main message here is that when using the same number of samples, our algorithm can actually give much better approximation guarantees. So that would mean an, uh, a user can stop much early. Okay. To conclude, we propose inference and maximization algor uh, algorithms for the online setting. And for future work, we would like to look into online algorithms for other graph problems, such as the computation of centralities. That's all. I don't think there is any direct uh, connection between these two problems. It could be offers a theory. But you know, like in databases have done very primitive stuff calling that, that stuff as K medoids. But in theory, people have done like K medians and graphs like for decades. Mm -hmm. right? So I, I know this doesn't probably just that it's good for Thanks a lot for the help. Okay, in the next speaker, someone will step aside, right?